ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pete Kelsey. Thank you. Um, last year in this event, at this event at AU, I had uh, the pleasure of talking about what was then a week, maybe a two-week-old project, that being uh, the work we've been doing at the Arizona Memorial in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Was anybody at that event last year? A few of you? Yeah. Well, it's my pleasure this year to basically give you an update and show you where we are and to share some of the things we've learned, um, the chances we took, and how that IP, how all that magic, innovative fairy dust um, is being turned into um, actual work by a lot of the other project team members. So to begin with, the first thing we learned at the end of last, uh, last year was something that this image shows really well, that about two-thirds of the ship, of the USS Arizona, is in very shallow water. And that presents a really difficult technical challenge for, in this case, sonar technology. Sonar needs space because it's acoustic to be able to send a pulse out and then get it back. And when that water it might be 18 inches deep, that's not an easy thing to do at all. But the partner team, or the project team we put together, was all about taking that on head on because they knew, they had this feeling that due to climate change and other uh, issues going on is that shallow water for them as an area to explore and to create a solution for was really important. So, what did we do first? We actually got our hands on a USV, an unmanned surface vehicle from a company called Deep Ocean Engineering that only drafts about nine inches. So this is a perfect way to get the sonar gear in and over uh, the ship without bumping into it uh, and uh, enabling us to get some really good data. Second piece of kit that we brought, are you sitting down? Right, you are. A laser scanner that works underwater. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> um, and this company, like the first one, said, well, you know, our gear is really designed to work at great depth uh, for the oil and gas industry, but we see the value in this too. Let's give it a try. Um, they came out and the data just blew our minds. So here's a point cloud from an underwater laser scanner on the deck of the Arizona showing a couple of open hatches. Well, to cut to the chase, um, we'll give you a look at the composite data to date. So this is all of the data we have up till about last week. So there's the bow of the ship, tremendous damage from the explosion, turret one there with three 14-inch guns. And this is recap, of course. And a point cloud is a point cloud is a point cloud to recap and, uh, to re uh, recap and the rest of the Autodesk products used. We've got just a little bit of data gap that you could see there amidships. That's turret three, which actually sticks out of the water and then turret four, and there are those same hatches um, that the laser scanner picked up for us. And then, wow, InfoWorks. Bringing all, the, all this data, both the terrestrial LIDAR and all of the sonar for the first time ever in InfoWorks to give that context of what, what you're seeing, what you're experiencing. Put a diver in there for scale. There's turret one again, 14-inch guns. Uh, the damage up in the bow um, is really just remarkable stuff. And fortunately for the Park Service, because the genesis of this project was, can you help us create a baseline, a data set that we can use as a baseline going forward for change detection? You know, what's going on down there in the ship? It was really cool, you know, amazing uh, uh, body of work that the team was able to put together. But for me, Cool isn't enough. And I had my superiors whispering in that ear, <laughs> that in my ear all the time. So, so what? Cool stuff is off the chart, but it doesn't pay the bills. Well, at almost the same time that we started this project last year, we got very busy with ports. Um, this one being the port of Long Beach in Southern California. Why? Because 
ports everywhere have to rehab, reinvent themselves to accommodate these new gigantic ships which will be coming through the Panama Canal, which means they need to understand as-built conditions in both the marine and the terrestrial uh, uh, environments. Um, so what we learned on the Arizona, we've been using like crazy in this space. Um, but any um, maritime infrastructure to include docks, dry docks. This is a dry dock facility in the Bay Area um, that's just another combination of a terrestrial point cloud and a sonar point cloud. One of the partners uh, that uh, we had with us on this project took what they learned and said, you know, environmental impact studies in the marine space, we can, we can use what we've learned here uh, in that regard, and they have been running with it ever since. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, you know, here's a, here's a government entity who basically, its responsibility, among other things, is to maintain uh, the dredging of the ports and all the coastline infrastructure. Um, they care a whole lot about, um, and we're in active conversations with them about some of the things we develop, both on the Arizona and with taking chances like this. This model of, I think it's a dam, it's inland, of course, was created from photogrammetry, from photographs from a UAV or a drone. I mean, it's pretty amazing stuff, which we also used on the Arizona. Um, and then, of course, I think, I think, the elephant in the room in terms of marine infrastructure is the oil and gas industry. Because you can't see a lot of it, right? Because it's underwater and typically at great depth. But there's also a lot of above water. But I think this is, this is the next great opportunity um, for all of this maritime work uh, we've been doing at Autodesk. Um, <clears throat> and then one of my, my favorite, just sort of offshoots of taking this chance, was one of the National Park Service biologists who was with us on the project said, I think these workflows could make a big difference with coral reef monitoring workflows, which are currently mean we have to kill the coral, bring it up to the boat to figure out 3D surface area what area of the coral is healthy, what is not, so on and so forth. Well, he's now off and running and doing really amazing work in the uh, marine biology or coral science area. And then finally, I, I can't think of a, you know, a better sort of answer to the so what. We, Autodesk, we're investing. Holy cow, we bought a boat. <laughs> I didn't see that happening. <laughs> um, and I, I think, you know, the evidence is clear right on the side of the boat. Autodesk Maritime R&D, we're on to something here. Really interesting. Um, it is worth the investment and the time. <clears throat> well, for me, there was always something missing. There was something nagging at me and a lot of the other project team members, which is this really sort of, not sort of, this really personal experiences you could have in the water at such a special place. Because this, this is a war grave. There are 900 guys who never got out of that ship. And for me, in this example that you're seeing now, to put my hands, that's the hole that the bomb went through, where it went through the deck that caused the explosion. Uh, it's just how there must be a way, there must be a way to use the things that we're learning here um, to share that sort of connection with data or a place with a much broader audience. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll tip, my, I'll tip the, my hat to the answer now. Just remember physical to digital to physical. So I'm going to back into that answer with a story. So December 7th, 1941. That armor-piercing bomb goes through the deck between turrets one and two and lights off a million pounds of ammunition in the forward magazine of the ship. There is a cataclysmic explosion, which you see here. For scale, uh, to the left there, that's the rear mast of the Arizona. That's about 200 feet high. There was an incredible fire. The ship sang and sank in nine minutes. Uh, basically, anyone who was in the forward section of the ship 
basically no one survived, with very few exceptions. Keep your eye on this spot right here. Believe it or not, a couple of guys were at that battle station about 300 feet from that explosion and survived. <clears throat> Another image of the Arizona a couple weeks later. Fires are out. This is what's left of the ship. You can see that the devastation of that explosion in the bow of the ship. And then there's that same spot where a couple of survivors actually got out. And you just think, how in the world was that possible? Well, this is Don Stratton, 19 years old, from Nebraska. And he was one of two sailors at that battle station when the ship exploded. And the fire started. And how did he get out? The, the ship tied up next to the Arizona. They threw him a line. He tied it off, him and another sailor, and went hand over hand through this incredible fire. Don was burned over 70% of his body, spent a year in the hospital, went home to Nebraska, lasted about a year there, re-enlisted, and then served on a destroyer until the end of the war in the Pacific. And what a pleasure it was to meet, <laughs> to meet Don in person. He's a great guy, sharp guy, funny guy. And this was the chance that the Autodesk team, we had to take him through the data, show him what we had done. And we were really hoping, you know, that it was going to mean something to him. And it did. But we were left a, I don't know, a little, you know, you can't expect a 93-year-old man to go, to even understand, you know, all the techno babble we'd been throwing at him all afternoon. <clears throat> so we decided to do something a little different. And that was to take an artifact from the deck of the ship. This is a cooking pot in the area of the galley. And then a number of the dive teams swam around it, took photos of it, created this computer model. And then how cool is this? This is a color 3D print of that cooking pot, one third scale. and my abs of steel. <laughs> well, I can't do justice to putting this in Don's hand and what that experience was like for all of us in the room. It was just unbelievable. But that, so going from the physical, the actual pot on the ship um, to creating a digital model of it, and then back to the physical, a physical print of it, because you can't take the pot off the ship. And we certainly can't put Don in the water as much as we actually thought about it. But we could print it and put it in his hand. And he got it. He understood. It was incredibly powerful. Um, he was actually moved to tears. I lost it. Everybody in the room, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, <laughs> Got it. Great story. Kind of romantic. Well, I would suggest that every one of us, designers, makers, engineers, architects, animators, we all, sooner or later, get to that point where we put our creation forth. And we hope for a positive emotional response. This is a great way to do it. <clears throat> so what did we learn? If I was going to sum this up, I have to go to people smarter than me. <laughs> In this case, Commander T.J. Neal, a naval officer, aviator, and clearly an eloquent guy, on loan to us um, from the Pentagon, um, said, serendipitous results lie at the intersection of orthogonal disciplines. I'm not the brightest tool in the shed, so I had to stare at it for a while, read it a few times. Serendipitous results. That's this. That's that magic stuff when you, when you take a chance, when you innovate, when you think differently, right? Well, they lie at the intersection of orthogonal disciplines. In this case, on the Arizona, a couple of kinds of LIDAR, a couple of kinds of sonar, photogrammetry, USVs, you name it. We just brought all that stuff together, held our breath, and hoped something great would happen. And it truly, truly did. <clears throat> 
Now, not to be left undone and to get to sort of that emotional part, the only thing I could come up with <laughs> was this, which is, with wow, all things are possible. So in the case of the project partner who said, wow, you know, I think the things I learned on the Arizona could really change environmental impact studies in the maritime space. Or the National Park Service diver uh, biologist who said, wow, you know, I think these workflows could really change how we uh, monitor coral reefs. And then lastly, <clears throat> a 93-year-old man who says, wow, my ship, my shipmates, my story, their story will not end. Thank you.